CMM overview. Uh, we'll see what are the features and benefits of CMM and just some basic overview of CMM here. So uh, these are the basic features and benefits of using CMM, uh, focusing on the role of a video operator. It's just you can see as a replacement or I would say another way of uh, managing and uh, configuring um, CMS instead of using the API. So either you can do API, but that gives you more features, more flexibility, a lot of options for configuration. This is a little more limited, but it has its own benefits as well. And it is used for different other purposes as well. Like uh, we can do the license management here, conference management by integrating a TMS within a, a CMM. So with integrating TMS, it doesn't mean that we will be able to perform the TMS operations. It will just give you a link and it will just connect you with the TMS from where you can just directly go uh, to the TMS from your um, CMM meeting manager. Yeah, they can add different devices from here. So uh, CMM is required for Cisco Meeting Server 3.0 licensing only. Uh, there we only use it for licensing version and for other configurations and management we now do using API after 3.0 CMS version. Before that we were using a CMM for different other purposes also for configurations. We can still use it but that is one recommendation. So mainly uh, there are four main functions that CMM can do. You can use CMM to configure itself, its own admin configurations, connect to CMM uh, to, uh, sorry, CMM to CMS con uh, or CMS clusters. You can configure it to integrate and connect to TMS or LDAP. These are the four things we can mainly can do. So if we look in this uh, overview of the dashboard and everything. We can find conference management and you can see conference management in the meetings menu. If you remember initially uh, in the previous uh, section, one of it, I showed uh, a, an option where you can add licensing, like smart licensing or traditional licensing. That was CMM only. So again, we'll just go through that interface. So for conferencing management, you can, uh, if you have integrated TMS with it, so you will be able to do some view operations, some editing also from here using APIs or information like uh, meeting titles, owners, information of that. In conference management, it gives you various uh, different options and management features like pain placement. So like I, uh, I think, I've discussed this before that you can create a pane placement and place the users as per their preference. For example, out of the 15, 20 users in a conference, you want any four users like CEO, uh, the vice president, director, and HR head to be displayed on the on the screen in the video. So uh, that can be done through pane placement. You can move participants like moving the participant from an ongoing conference to let's suppose breakout session or any other conference. So that is more participants. You can add more participants, set layouts for those participants, mute and mute some basic functions. We can do recording and streaming. Uh, these are the uh, login functions, like when you log into the conference, what should be the default settings, like the administrators can uh, do that from CMM, that mute on entry. So automatically the users who are dialing will be on mute. So that like on the important calls, you do not want users logging in to be uh, on mic unmuted and locked so that they cannot do any content sharing or anything. Uh, event logs can be seen from conference management and we can edit in TMS. This is where you can just add your TMS URL. And as you add the TMS URL there, you will be able to see the conferences from CMS also like for monitoring. So here we can see a participant from the conference. So from the list of conferences that you can monitor from the conference management, you can open conference, uh, you can see participants, you can do some editing from here, like layouts and so on, labels. Yeah. We can create various templates, like for spaces, we can create different spaces with different templates. Import users uh, within CMM, you can import users from LDAP. 
we can also create users here. Okay, so this symbol just means pain placement. That is okay. CMM architecture, uh, it is supported for version 3.0. It can run on VMware virtual machine, ESXi host, uh, supports these specifications, 20 gigahertz, eight or four core processor, 100 GB storage, uh, four or eight GB RAM, one network interface card is required. Yeah. Then uh, capacity, if meetings are managed for call bridge, for call legs started per second, uh, user signed in meetings per week uh, depends on the deployment type, whether it's a small to medium scale deployment or large scale deployment. So different number of call bridges, call legs, like uh, 10 call legs in small medium deployment in 20 uh, in large deployments. User signed in loud 15 in small medium and up to 25 at a time. Meetings per week. 10,000 each. Okay, then some protocols which are used for the communication with different uh, components of the network, like with the operator, with the licensing. If you're using smart licensing to manage your CMM, you need to have a smart licensing account which is hosted on the cloud. So you need that and it is registered You and it is paid account. Using that, you can access smart licensing. In case of traditional, you can use traditional also, um, which we can also uh, access using API or through PuTTY that we saw traditional uh, licensing, how we can enable. LDAP using LDAP, UDP or TLS for NTP synchronization. For logs, let's suppose a syslog server integration with a CMM using um, TCP, UDP or TLS for communication. Then a uh, meeting server, uh, different clusters of meeting servers can be managed through CMM. Okay, this is just showing a uh, resilient deployment in case of clusters. Connectivity to TMS, we can integrate the TMS and connect to the TMS uh, within the CMM and have the conferencing managed from here and monitored from CMM. How does Cisco Meeting Server Management communicate with the TMS? It communicates with the TMS Booking API. And that is it. Let me just brief you a little here. OK, so in CMM Cisco meeting management, uh, main, four main features or purpose are there of using it. So the four main purpose are to configure itself. Configure itself means various different components of it, adding other systems with it or uh, user configurations for it and so on. So configure. EMM itself. Um, connect to CMS or CMS clusters, standalone or resilient. You can connect to TMS for conference management. You can connect to LDAP for user import. All these are the main purpose of using CMM. So we look into the various options in the dashboard. You find like settings menu. This is a very good menu for various things like I showed earlier also, like licensing. You can add from here. So uh, you find a setting menu. You go to licenses. You have to click change from there. It gives you options like uh, smart licensing. It gives you option for traditional license in or no license. You can select from there for smart license. You need the smart uh, license account. You or uh, that is configured in the cloud. Uh, for traditional, you don't need to, but uh, with the traditional, it gives you like some limited uh, management capabilities. Like if you have smart licensing, you can go to the 
another menu that is called licensing or licenses and there you can manage monitor licenses only once you have a license added but that is only the case if you have smart license if you have a traditional license in that case you will only be able to monitor like view only the licenses uh, from the licensing page so uh, these are a few things we can do from settings uh, along with that, uh, apart from licensing option in settings, we can do a lot of other configurations like adding certificates. We can connect to TMS from here. Add TMS, add NTP for synchronization. We can add licensing, as I mentioned. We can do login settings for users. Uh, you can do security settings. You can do backup, restore, uh, upgrades, so on. Then we have a server menu. So one is setting. We we have licenses for managing and monitoring. Then we have server menu. We can manage connections from here. From server menu, you will see the different systems you have added. Let's suppose you have CMS, TMS, connectivity, uh, and let's suppose any other external server. Yeah, all those servers you can manage from here, all these connections with the CMM. You can view, you can set up from here, from this page. Then we have a user menu where you will import users through LDAP. And also, you create uh, the users menu in CMM. Uh, basically, the users we create or import in uh, CMM are of two types. Two types of users are there. Uh, one is administrator, admin users, or video operators. Not the normal users. For that, we have other uh, systems. Here we are creating the users which are administrators or video operators. So that is it. These are the main options we see and uh, the configurations we can do for monitoring, for configurations, and so on. 